Hello, everybody out there in the book selling world. Let's talk about CDs. <laughs> I want to talk about the five most important factors that I consider when I pick a CD up off of the shelf and scan it. Now there's some things I consider beforehand such as should I even bother scanning the CD. Usually I only look up CDs that have barcodes just because I don't want to sit there typing in the title for a variety of reasons. Usually there's not as many valuable CDs as there are books where it's a little bit more worth it to look up books, type them in, be it the ISBN or the title. CDs don't have ISBN numbers, so you have to type in the title, which can take a little bit longer. It's up to you if you have the time and the patience. You can definitely type in every single CD that looks like it could be worth money. Which CDs to type in has to do with experience. You get to a feel for what CDs are worth looking up. There's certain singers and, and performers and groups that I know are worth looking up or a CD that I've sold or that I've sent in before. I start to get a feel for that certain types of music over other types of music. Sold CDs in all types of musical categories. So kids stuff, rap, R&B, rock, classical rock, soul, 70s, 80s, 90s, present day, all kinds of stuff. So classical is another one. So there's a lot of different genres of music that you can sell. There's certain types of cover artwork that when you see it, you know it could be worth some money. It might be obscure if you've never heard the band before. There's so many bands, so many singers, so many groups. It takes a long time to source, to scan a lot of CDs, hundreds and thousands of CDs to get a better idea for that. So that is just, my big suggestion for that is just to, to look up a lot of CDs on your scanning app. So currently I am mostly using FBA scan with my Bluetooth scanner so that I can just quickly scan it and it pops up. So the five things that I look at are the following and I usually look at it in this order. The first one is the average sales rank over the past three months, which FBA scan shows right next to the current sales rank. Sometimes the current sales rank will be really low, like 50,000, but then the average will be 300,000 or 250,000, something like that. So I wanna look at the average more than anything else. To quick glance at it, to get an idea of what it's been doing over the last three months, because that's a good idea. Depending on the CD, if it's a holiday theme CD, then it's gonna sell better typically closer to the holidays, even though they do sell throughout the year. But you know if you're you know, now in this part of the year, it's not gonna sell as well probably at between September and December, definitely November and December, it's gonna be typically selling really well, especially if it's a CD that is, has any popularity. Typically, I like to stay below 300,000 for CDs. My most comfortable range is 200,000 and under, and even more comfortable is 150 and under. If the average rank is 150 and under over the last three months, then I know that's a CD that is selling pretty steadily. And of course, if you get a CD that is consistently under 100,000 rank over the past three months, or if you look on Camel, 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 and you see that it's selling steadily, it's keeping below about 100,000, then you know it's gonna move fairly quickly. And of course, anything consistently under 50,000 is uh, a fast moving CD. Now, of course, I've sent in a lot of CDs that are ranked under 10,000 and a good amount ranked under 1,000, or, or I would say under 2,000. So those under 2,000 move incredibly fast. Those can sell within a few days to a week or so, depending on how you price it, of course. If you wanna pull out as much money as possible, you might wait a little, have to wait a little bit longer. If you wanna just sell it quickly, just turn it over quickly, then you're gonna to have to price it competitively. So number one is the sales rank. So I take a look at that, 300,000 or less. The second thing is the condition of the CD, which is something that I already consider when I pick it up. So technically, I guess that would be the first thing, aside from the, the type of CD it is but the condition is really important. So how messed up is the case? Is it cracked? If it has any cracks, are the cracks really deep? Is it sort of shattered? Is hinge on the bottom and top where, where it snaps in to the holes to be able to open it and swing it open and closed? Are one of those broken off? Because that's pretty bad. You don't want to send a CD in like that. You want to replace that or just skip that CD. So how bad is that? How bad is the artwork or how good is the artwork? Does it look really great, crisp? No water damage. So the big thing is you don't want water damage and you don't want, of course, tearing or any tears or rips. And then number three, any major creasing. A little bit of creasing. Sometimes when it slides in there, it's got those little teeth that hold it in place, the front artwork. 
Sometimes I can get decreases from that, that's okay, but you're probably gonna wanna list it as good. So the condition is really important. It's gonna be up to you. How bad are you? is the CD that you're willing to send in? I, I don't really want the, the CD to be cracked. If it has a, a, a thin, shallow crack, uh, I'll probably send it in. If it has a deeper crack, it's probably gonna be listed acceptable, but I'll try to replace the case ahead of time knowing whether I have replacement cases. So the condition, the sales rank. The third one is the lowest FBA offer. So when I look at the app, I look at the sales rank and I look at the FBA column on FBA scan. If you're using Amazon app, you can see the lowest FBA offer and then you can click through to, to see the rest of the offers if there's more than one. So on FBA scan, it'll list some of them. Sometimes it won't list any depending upon um, you know the pricing and whatnot. So you can go through, you can click through on the FBA and see all of the FBA offers. So that's a huge indicator is, is where is the FBA price and how many are there, how many FBA offers. So I typically want to stay not much lower than $9, $8.95 for a CD. But again, guys, it depends on how much you paid for the CD. If you're paying a dollar, then you're probably not gonna wanna go below nine or 10 bucks so you can make enough money. But if you get it in a lot and you're paying a quarter, 10 cents, 15 cents, 50 cents, then maybe you're willing to go to 7.95, 6.95, but only if the CD is selling fast, nothing long tail at all. Because why are you gonna wait around for a CD that's priced 7.95, even if you paid 10 cents for it? You want it to sell fast so you can turn it around, get your money back, and you're not gonna make that much profit. Of course, if you paid five or 10 cents, the profit margin is gonna be big, but it's not gonna be that much money. But I would rather turn those over quickly. So the lowest FBA offer is, is important. If you see a bunch of 4.99s, 3.99s, then you're probably not gonna wanna send that in. Also, you know, the, the amount of FBA offers, I like to have, three to five at most, unless it's a really fast selling CD and then there's many more, there's 10, 20, 30, then I might send it in depending upon the price and how much I paid for it, that sort of thing. So you have to consider all of those. Number four is number of offers overall and FBA, right? So when you look at the FBA column, you wanna know how many FBA offers and then you also wanna know how many overall. So it'll show you for used, merchant fulfilled and new, the Amazon app will show you how many overall offers there are. The more offers there are, the, the more competitive it is, clearly. And the more FBA offers, the more competitive, unless it's a quick seller. And of course, how high is it going? If it's going for a lot of money, typically there's not gonna be that many FBA offers. If it's going for over 20 bucks, if it's creeping up to $30 to $40 for a CD, then you're not gonna want much competition. Even if there is a little bit of competition, let's say three or four offers, all for let's say 25 to $30, and if you want to sell it sooner, you could price it a little bit less. Just depends. Depends on a lot of factors. You know, how, how often is it selling? How much did you pay for it? So overall, how many offers there are. I don't want too many because that's too much competition. So usually I only send CDs in that don't have that much competition unless it's selling really fast, like I said. Then I look at the merchant fulfilled prices, the lowest prices. If they're all penny offers, then I know that it's not that valuable of a CD, especially if there's a lot of offers, even if there's not that many offers. But if it's starting at a penny and there's like five, six, seven penny offers, then you want the FBA offer to be at least 10 bucks and up, unless it's a fast seller, like I said. But I always look at the MF prices just to get a feel for the overall market on that CD and where I think that I can sell it. Because even though FBA is not competing with Merchant Fulfilled, it all works together. So if there's a FBA offer going for $25, there's only one, let's say it has 150,000 rank over the last three months, so it has a good rank, but the MF prices, they have a lot of penny offers and they go up to 50 cents and a dollar. So you know that $25 FBA offer might be a little bit too high. That person might be asking a bit too much and might have to wait a while. So therefore I would probably price it lower. You don't always have to match. I usually, I try to match the, FBA prices, other FBA prices, but sometimes the other prices are just not realistic and I wanna sell it faster. I don't wanna sit on it for an additional $5 and wait another six months. So you have to decide for yourself. There's no hard and fast rule about you have to match other FBA offers. You don't wanna to have to tank the price, but that's, that's a different conversation when there's a lot of offers. When there's only one other offer, two other offers, and they're really high, and you look at the sales rank history and you see that it's not selling that much, maybe a couple times a month, maybe once a month, 
then if it's $26, maybe you want to price it $21, $19.95 to get the next sale because they want to wait, they're willing to wait, and maybe you're not. It's up to you. You don't have to match them, but if you match them, understand you're going to have to compete with them directly and then the MF offers. But if you if you have it lower, significantly lower than the other FBA offers, you're really only competing with that, that other FBA offer for prime buyers, especially. Other people that come along don't have prime. They just want it really cheap. They're not going to buy your offer anyway. So I do consider the MF prices. The other thing, so those are five, right? The, the sixth one would be camel, camel, camel that on the FBA scan app, I can just push the, the icon for camel and then it'll go right to the page and I can see the, the history, price history and sales history and make a decision. The three month average sales rank helps a lot, but sometimes I just wanna see how's it been doing over the whole year because maybe the last three months are not indicative of how it does over a longer period of time. Maybe those three months were really good or really bad. So it's good to click through and look at that. If you don't have an FBA scan or another paid app and you're only using Amazon seller app, well, understand that I only very recently started using FBA scan and I would just go with my gut or go based upon every other factor. And I usually did pretty well with that without even having to use camel, camel, camel while sourcing. And when I got home, I would use it to see how I would price it and that sort of thing. And it worked well for me, but it does help if you have it because then you can just decide right there. You don't have to worry about whether you're bringing home something that you're potentially might not sell that great for you. So those are most of my parameters that I, that I think, especially the five most important. Sales rank, CD condition, lowest FBA offer, number of offers overall and number of FBA offers, and the MF prices, the lowest MF prices and how they go up. Do they, is there a start at a dollar and they jump up to $10 and they jump up to $20? Or is it pretty low, all of them below $5 and then they start to go up? Or are they penny offers? Are they five cents? Are they 50 cents? And then the last one is camel, 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 which is sort of a bonus one, but you probably know about that, which is nice to have on your app. So CDs, just like books, take time to figure out, to figure out which CDs are worth scanning, pulling off and scanning, and then looking at all the information, which ones are worth buying, investing in, and sending into Amazon. But the rank's a little bit lower, whereas with books, I'm willing to comfortably go up to a million, million and a half to the high millions if, it's a, if it has a good price. Whereas with CDs, 300,000 and less. If it's over 300,000, it's gotta be selling for a lot of money. I mean, I've sold CDs for 500,000 uh, 500, rank, but they were selling for over 20 bucks. I would say at least $20 and up that you can legitimately sell the CD for if you're gonna be sourcing the CDs that have over 300,000 rank. So hopefully that helped out and that your Sunday's going well. Maybe you're resting, maybe you're doing some sourcing, preparing your next shipment. I'm halfway through my next shipment up to 25, so I'll be able to send one out hopefully on Monday. As always, remember, keep booking. Hi, 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 hi.